Hi, I've clicked on to today's tropical tip for Friday over here in the Atlantic. We just have a couple of little areas to watch warily for potential mischief over the next couple of days. The first one is the monsoonal circulation tied in here uh, just east of Nicaragua and Costa Rica in the extreme southwestern Caribbean. This circulation is just offshore here, uh, not closed perhaps yet. But getting there pretty close and this is going to be getting more well defined over the next day or so but we'll be moving inland fairly quickly on and across Central America and thus probably will not have a whole lot of a chance to develop on our side however it may become a storm in the eastern Pacific once it crosses over and so we will be watching for that over in these areas and of course some heavy rain for the areas where it is crossing over in Central America the rest of the Atlantic remains fairly quiet the only other area uh, is outside of the deep tropics over here this area at the tail end of this front is going to be very interesting if we go over here to a larger view farther north there's this front that's draped down here and the very tail end of this has got some low level vorticity with it and it's going to be sitting here for the next three to four to maybe even five days through this weekend and into early next week as this ridge here over the central United States blocks this from being able to move out and keeps it stuck here and uh, this will be a fairly marginally favorable situation for this to try to develop. If we turn on the upper level winds here, we can see that the upper level ridge is nosing over the area like this, providing a little bit of an anticyclonic flow loft which aids in upper divergence and would help air pressure to lower a little bit at the surface if this tries to develop. The things that will keep this from developing really fast are that this is still along a front, so there is a temperature gradient right here making this a baroclinic environment, and the Hurricane Center will not consider something a tropical entity unless it is detached from all fronts regardless of what it looks like and that will take a couple of days for this temperature gradient to diffuse in here enough for this front to degenerate and uh, turn this into its own separate entity of low pressure and uh, the other thing that will keep this um, from developing very fast is the elongation associated with the front. You notice that when we have a front, we have a large area of converging winds here. It's not consolidated into any one area like we generally like to see with the tropical disturbance. It's a large boundary with a lot of converging winds and that takes a while for something along it to wind up and start hogging all of that convergence, which is what this will have to do if it wants to develop. The models don't really support heavy development of this. The lowest I've seen it get is 1,012 millibars on the GFS or something like that. Not something that the models are too excited about here, but as was mentioned, this is a situation that is fairly classic for homegrown mischief and home brew near the southeast U.S. coast. So this will be something that we will have to watch a little bit, see if these thunderstorms can keep going off and develop any kind of a low center over the next few days. Again, we have a while yet to watch it, so it will be worth keeping an eye on over the next few days. Now if we head over to the Pacific again, this is Typhoon Mayon, and uh, here's the infrared still moving west-northwest here is now a Category 3, a major typhoon, and again the eye is still having trouble getting well defined here. This area of red, um, the deep convective cloud tops here are still only halfway around the center, and this north side of the storm has been just hammered over the last couple of days by dry air, a lot more than even I thought at the beginning of this storm's development. If you look over at the latest micro wave pass. Check out what's going on here. The core is all to the south. This dry air to the north has made it into the eye. There is a break in the eye wall and there is nothing between the outside environment and the eye here um, through this eye wall break and there is really nothing going on this, on this northern side of the storm. It really needs to build this core if it's really going to strengthen any more than it currently is. Otherwise it will remain a cat 3. It'll have a chance later on. If we look at the water vapor loop here, we can see, again, here's this ridge pumping dry air in the southeast flank of it into the northern part of Mayon, a sinking air drying it out, and the inflow into the storm is just choking it off on the northern side here. Once it starts curving northwest and north, it may have a chance to strengthen a little bit on this more divergent side of the upper ridge, and we'll see how that goes, because in here will probably be its peak, and then it'll start weakening before landfall in Japan, which is good news for them, but it's still going going to be a strong typhoon.
And if we look over here at the upper divergence map, this is another way of illustrating what's going on with the upper high. We have the upper high up in here, convergent flow aloft, and this these dashed lines here indicate upper convergence, as I've been saying, on the north side of the storm. And notice where the upper divergence core is. The core of highest upper divergence is centered not over the eye, which is right here, but over the southern part of the storm. And normally you would want this centered right over the eye here, and the eye wall where the divergence is highest but instead it's offset and whenever you have this offset it means that there are some things going on it could either be wind shear it could be convergence and pinching on the storm like it is up here or a couple of other things that would offset the area of most favorable upper level conditions and uh, areas favored for lowering of pressures at the surface and here this is definitely not a perfect situation. What's also interesting is notice this little guy down here. This is a tropical depression. If I go back to the loop over here, tropical depression, I forget its name. I can't remember it, but this is going to be actually moving up here towards Mayon as Mayon moves this way, which means that it's probably going to get entrained into Mayon's circulation here uh, with time. And it'll be interesting to see that. We saw a situation like this with Tropical Storm Julia last year getting entrained into Igor as they both trekked westward across the Atlantic, and such things are fairly interesting as the interaction between the two can be quite something to watch. And we'll see how this goes. Probably won't have, ultimately, a very significant effect on Mayon, but very interesting to see nonetheless. Here's the forecast track from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. Uh, the Wonderground maps show this as a Category 4. The winds are 130 miles per hour, which is technically a Category 3. Uh, it is forecasted to become a Category 4 by the Joint Typhoon Warning Center and then move northward as a Category 3, weakening slightly before making landfall in southern Japan. The models are fairly well in agreement on this now, and it looks like Japan is going to get the hit from this at this point. Uh, we can still hope that a last minute veering off may occur but at this point I would just be prepared for a major typhoon hit in southern Japan and uh, not moving all that fast either again I've showed you the upper pattern a couple of days before now showing how this is going to be moving fairly slowly across Japan not moving out as quickly as most typhoons giving it at least a day and a half or two even over land before moving off over the northern Pacific. So this is going to be something that folks up there need to watch very carefully. They've had a lot of things going on lately in the news, so this is not a great situation for them. But hopefully Mayon will be able to weaken sufficiently before landfall to avoid causing any catastrophic damage. But chances are it'll still be close to a major typhoon, which is a big deal. So hopefully folks are prepared over there. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.